And we are back with your post round one evaluation of the Cowboys NFL. And we can talk about, you know, just draft things in general. I was pretty surprised that Penix went, you know, to the Falcons and all that kind of stuff. There are some things we could do big picture wise, but y'all know who we are. I'm Vash Lombard. Y'all know. I'm, y'all, I don't have to tell you who I am. But this is Brian Broaddus. Sensei is what I called him this morning because that's how I felt. He's in the studio right now getting ready to do more work. Uh, me and him had this conversation with y'all uh, many, many times. Like, hey, this is the busiest time of our life but we love to do it for you guys it's the best time in the world brian bars how are you feeling are you ready for day two are you hung over from day one no man i'm good thanks for uh always having me on always appreciate being on your platform your audience is outstanding uh yeah uh feeling good already been asked four times who are the best available players you have on your board and so i tweeted that out at brian broadest brian with a y and uh, yeah, you can check it out. It's a uh, it's a, a pretty good list of guys. I, I feel like that uh, they did a nice job being the Cowboys of recouping a pick. We went into this thing thinking, how could they get a fourth round pick back or get some draft capital? I think they I think they they did even better than I believed that they were going to do. Vach with with going back to the Lions the way they did. Okay, let's uh let's walk through that timeline. So me, Will Still, Fusty King, like I said, watch our show. If you were watching us, go back and watch the replay of the draft show on YouTube, you know, whatever, uh, whatever app you guys choose. But if you watch the draft show, come check out what me, Will Still, and um Foots did. But the build up Brian brought us, I had no clue that Barton was gonna fall that far. I had no clue that Fautanu uh from Washington, the tackle Pittsburgh looks at him as a center. I thought that was interesting. Um, I did. I had no no clue that he was going to fall. I knew there was some interest for Darius Robinson, and we knew there was some interest for Tyler Guyton. So the closer we got to the end, I started pulling up depth charts. Right, like okay, okay, there is no way Jacksonville will take an interior offensive lineman right here. They've been they've been dealing with offensive line this whole time, and we felt like me, Will, and Foots. We felt like the pick was bound to be Barton. If there was a name that we was hearing, if there was interest that we knew about, if there was whispers that we were, they love Graham Barton. But, you know, because of just how th things in this draft kind of worked and, you know, Trey Lance being your fourth round quarterback this year, uh, you did, I guess the Cowboys didn't want that long wait from 87 to 178 or something like that. They still going to have that weight, Brian Barras, but that weight is much better by having pick 73, which is the ninth pick in the third round. No, you're absolutely right about that, Vosh. The, the thing about it was that we we did some simulations on the draft show where, where uh, Aisha Morrison and Nick Harris and I traded back and we didn't even use, or I didn't use in the simulation Detroit because I never felt like that they were going to give up pick 73 to get to where you needed to be. So Detroit was a team that I went past because, you know, they didn't have the capital at the time. You're looking for teams with multiple fours. You're looking for teams with multiple, you know, threes that maybe can help you that way. Um, but Detroit was not one of those teams. So uh, for them to – the way the board fell, I, I had good uh, a good intel from Jacksonville what was going on. I had good intel from Green Bay what was going on. So I kind of had a feeling of what was going to happen. Yeah, for Graham Barton to, to get to you, I think there's a lot of folks out there, Botch, that, that um, you know, they're looking at the pick right now and they're, they're, they're saying, you know, well, Guyton's this, Guyton's that, and, you know, because I think – you know, for the last three, four months, we've been talking about Graham Barton, you know, and, and, and let's be honest, people don't have access to tape and they trust us. They trust us to tell them that Graham Barton is a damn good football player. You know, they trust us to tell them that, uh, that, uh, you know, Guyton is a good football player. So there's, you know, when people can, I see, understand why people can get a little disappointed in the pick and like, gosh, but you look at your football team, if you're a Dallas Cowboy fan, you're thinking, man, we need a center. We need man, we got to we got to have a center. Yeah, they weren't going to draft Powers Johnson. That's on me. Okay, I'll take the I'll take the 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 arrow for the the Powers Johnson one because he was the best center on my board. And as and I know I'm kind of going around and around here on some stuff, Please. but I just want to make sure that we get all this out and we'll get back to that 73rd pick, which I think is going to be key today. Sure. But the thing with like Powers Johnson. Watch the tape. This is the disadvantage that we have now in our line of work. 
we watch the tape or what, however we get it, however we get the video, whatever we do, we're making our evaluations. Don't get to talk to the kid. Don't get to see the medical stuff. Had an idea about the medical stuff. Didn't get to talk to the kid. And, and the best way I could describe it to everybody out there is if you don't check off every single box, they're not going to pick you. There, there's some things that they will say, we'll let it go. You know, yeah, we can deal with that. We can control them. We've got the program. If you just, you know, I don't want to go into great detail, but like I said, with Powers Johnson, there's things more there than medical to them. And they weren't, you know, now saying if he's there in the third round, fourth round, that maybe, oh, they circle back. I just know at 24, that was not going to be a pick. That just wasn't. There was there was a lot of concerns there. So they moved on. With with uh, with Graham Barton, you know, man, there was a lot of positivity about him. You know, you started to you started to think about if he was on the board, they were going to take him. You know, but they determined that with the number of players that they had with him and Guyton, I just think the 73rd pick was just too good for them to pass up. They they were, you're right, they didn't want to sit there from pick 87 to pick 171. They just didn't want to do that. And to pick up 73, massive overpay by the Lions, That's that, that to me right there is – yeah, disappointed that they didn't get Barton. Sure, okay, they got Guyton. Absolutely. Let me let's see what pick seventy three is for this Dallas Cowboys team. You know, is it is it going to be a linebacker? Is it going to be a runner? Is it going to be one of these wide receivers that you've looked at? You know, you've got thirty five guys you've looked at at wide receiver. You know, I don't know if it's going to be a defensive tackle. Just not getting that vibe right now. But pick seventy three is going to be. I think this is the one, yes, you look at the first round pick, but this player, whoever they pick at 73, that's going to be the one that's going to tell you, tell you if they did the right thing to, to trade back in my, in my opinion, that's, that's how I'm going to evaluate it. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of sides to this thing, Brian brought us, you know, uh, you know, sitting at 24th overall, I wouldn't have been upset drafting Arnold, Tyrion Arnold from Alabama. I love, sure. I love the player, you know, and we're going to have question marks about hurt guys, right? So Trey Diggs coming off the ACL or whatnot, right? That could just be a little bit of backup insurance for you. But Brian, you know, just me being draft guy, I can imagine this defense having Diggs on one side, Arnold on another side, and we get to move Bland back to nickel. I was excited about that. Plus, uh, uh, you know, Arnold being the guy that plays at Alabama, running that match stuff that Zimmer likes to do. Boy, I right. was like, hey, we can party here. But um, being able to to kind of move around a little bit, I was out like it was very attractive to move around for me. But we had to weigh pros and cons. Like there were some dudes on the board, but. I get that the 73 is massive. We have to hit on that pick, by the way, Brian. Like, yeah, getting 73 is cool, but we have to make sure that 73 yeah. pays off in a real way because we moved away from Tyrion Arnold. We moved away from Jordan Morgan, Graham Barton, Darius Robinson. Those dudes flew off the board when we sure. moved back, and I, I, I started getting sick a little bit. But they right. felt like, you know, it was five picks. They felt like they liked four guys. They decided to roll the dice, and – we're going to see if it ultimately pays off for him or whatnot. Um, we're going to talk about Tyler Guyton with some with some decent detail here. But those names that we moved away from, I mean, that's some people's center one. That's some people, that's a, a top, you know, five or so defensive edge guy that we like that can come in and, you know, help with the run. And that's a lot of people's number one corner that you moved away yeah. from. So I like Guyton a bunch, um, but those are some names. So I really hope 73 pays off, Brian. No, you're, you're absolutely right. And the discussion you had to – um, you know, I know that we were dealing with you were you were on your show last night. We were doing our show and the discussion I brought up Arnold because all those at one time, all those cornerbacks were still on the board. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there thinking like, damn, are we going to pass on? And I, I, I Arnold on, on my board or my stack, I believe I had is, is the seventh best player on my on my stack. And so. You know, when when you start to when you start to the to actually let me see what I got. Yeah, I'm the seventh best player. And that's the discussion that I was having, you know, with the room with, with our guys. I'm like, well, okay, if it was up to me, we would we would be taking Arnold right now. You know, if you were and maybe if you were in a situation where a couple of years ago where you didn't have a loss at tackle, you didn't have all this massive guys going out and 
you know, I uh, going out the door that you have really needs. If you would have taken the best available player on the board at the time when they picked, Arnold would have been that guy I know on my board. Now, maybe they have Arnold a completely, completely different area. But, man, there are some teams that needed corner that passed on him, mm-hmm. you know. And I was sitting there thinking, why are all these corners – why are all these corners coming down the board? You know, Philadelphia, I, to be honest, I, I love, I love the kid from Toledo. I do. I, you know, I had Arnold higher. Sure. I was glad that that Philly didn't take Arnold mm-hmm. to be honest with you. Yeah. And I was like, damn, okay. Mitchell's a good player, but I'm glad they didn't take Arnold. Arnold is a dude so, that, you know, watching film on him. He's shutting down Brian Thomas at LSU yeah, and neighbors yeah. is going crazy on the other side. And right. they say, cool, move Arnold over the, over there to neighbors right. and slow him down a little. Like Arnold's a dude first the competition yeah. pedigree, the great film and all that. So Arnold, uh, um, so Mitchell, I like a bunch, but Arnold, Brian, okay. One day we can really go in deep about this and maybe you can ask your gang of seven friends, but what is it about cornerback that has teams kind of weird like that? Because Joey, Joey Porter jr. Was another player that we had ranked pretty high. Like everybody loved Joey Porter, but he fell in the draft for whatever reason. And he had a hell of a rookie year, right? He seems to be a, a hell of a pick for, for Pittsburgh value wise. And then we see Mitchell and Arnold, these, these cornerbacks that we covered in that way, right? You know, one day we need to figure out why a corner is, is, is falling like that. Yeah, we it's it's a it's a great question to ask, and I I, I promise you I'll put it to him, and maybe next Friday when we do our show I'll sure. have a good answer for you. Sure, I'll tell you another guy. You know, I always like to joke about with my crew about the Ravens. Yeah. And the Ravens aren't going to move; they're just going to sit there and pick players. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, here's Wiggins comes down the board, and they're just sitting there. You yeah. know, they're they're having a turkey sandwich and a diet coke, and mm-hmm. all of a sudden it's oh, who's on the board? Oh, the Wiggins kid from yeah. Let's let's hand the card in. You know? Yeah, and you're just going, damn. They're sitting there. And they could use a corner, mm-hmm. and depending on how you have him stacked on your board, you know he could be the he could be the the first best corner. He could be the third best corner on your board. Yeah, but he's a, he's a first round legitimate. He was the last. Well, uh, uh, the you know Jackson Powers, uh, of course. I mean, I have a first round grade, but on my first round great he was the last one to go he was the last one off the board and so you know i but th- there's some teams that have really good evaluations of corners they have a good feel for the position and then other teams it is the biggest struggle you can ever imagine and i'll ask the gang of seven why why that tends to be I love to see Jordan Morgan getting his respect. And like we said, Graham Barton yeah. went uh, went uh, 26 to Tampa Bay. Darius Robinson for the Cardinals. I think that's a pretty good pick for them. Xavier Worthy was a bit of a surprise for me going first round. But, hey, the Chiefs can do what they want to do. They win, they win Super Bowls, man. Um, so Tyler Guyton is on the board. And I think that the unanimous feel around Cowboy Nation was, okay, this went from five names that, we, that we've been talking about, that we've heard, that we liked. And now the last name is sitting there. So regardless of what I feel about the player, regardless of what anybody yeah. feels about the player, Player. Dallas loved him and Dallas yeah. had four guys and five picks to go and they rolled the dice and the dice roll paid off for him because they really like Tyler Guy and I'm assuming that they were banking on this upside and if we're talking about the upside of the player if you can get it done Brian all I can do is watch film all I can do is look at his Oklahoma tape. All I can do is see the deficiencies on the, you know, so I can say, hey, well, I see some false steps. I see some problems with the hands, the elbows start Tall to guy. flare. Tall yeah. guy, knee bender, yeah. Knee bend, you know. Sometimes yeah. you want guys to lean on you in the run game, but you don't want them to get over their toes all that much yeah. and get unbalanced and things like that. So there are some deficiencies, but um, out of all the weird things I've said about Tyler Guyton, uh, people think it's hyperbole when I say he's one of the best moving offensive linemen I've ever seen ever. There you go. There's no hyperbole verbally in that that's not me being hyperbolic that's not me trying to sell you on the player i've said enough bad things about the player the kid athletically always gets to his landmark is it perfect when he gets there is does he miss is his hands weird when he gets there that's for the coaches that's for solari i hope he calls duke manny weather and gets that bbl that we that we all know duke can do with these guys but man tyler guiding they're banking on the upside brian brothers where did you have him on your board what's your thoughts on the player yeah, I had him. Uh, I had him actually very high on my board. Uh, I believe I had him at pick eight or player eighteen mm-hmm. on my board on my stack. So you know there were some other tackles. Uh, I was hoping that the Washington kid would somehow make it down that way. It got close, man. Yeah. I mean, it got really close to the point where you're like, "Holy geez, they're gonna have a crack at this guy." Yeah. But uh, to me, uh, 
everything that you said about Guyton is absolutely true. And the, the, the space play can be uh, a little off at time. The finish in the space, not getting in space. I think the space part of it is good. Uh, the, the, the finish in space could be a little bit of something could be a little hit and miss. I think you're absolutely right. I think he's going to need some work with his hands. We heard the same thing about, uh, with Tyler Smith coming out of Tulsa, Yeah, the hand placement, the hand use led to some holdings, bad body position, things like that. This kid though is massive. I mean, he is a big guy that moves exceptionally well, um, we mentioned about the knee bend. I mean, he'll play with knee, his knees. He'll play low, and then other times he'll play tall. But I think there's he if he can find the consistency in that of playing with the knee bend, playing better with his hands, everything about the kid's athletic ability and movement skills is top shelf. Yeah. And, yeah, that's what coaching's all about. You know, you take this kid and you find a way to make it all work for him because – the, the traits are clearly there. It, it, he's not a finished product. He's not a perfect product. But the thing about his size, his athletic ability, I, I think they're all all things that they're very worthy of where he was taken. You know, Brian, some of my reservations, I think there's a lot of Cowboy Nation right now. They're comparing his situation to Tyler Smith directly, where I think right. both of those players are are kind of different. I think Tyler Smith, as, as weird as his hands were, I think Tyler Smith was more refined as a football player, maybe not as an offensive lineman, but we would see Tyler Smith will go, hey, his hands are goofy right here. But he drove, yeah. but he drove that dude to the water coolers, right? right. <laughs> like this is goofy. Okay, uh, okay, he plays at Tulsa. Maybe the competition's not that great. Okay, versus Ohio State. Okay, he's whooping those kids. Also, we just got to fix right. the holding calls. We just got to fix the hands on the shoulders. Where I think the difference is with uh, with uh, I think Guyton's much more athletic, which is wild to say because Tyler Smith is a, is a, is a wild is he's a weird athlete in his own right. Tyler Guyton's much more athletic and much more uh, you know movement you know movement oriented, and he has a longer way to go as far as his uh, technique wise or whatnot. I don't see Tyler as like a molly push you around type of dude but if let's just say we roll out the bed one day and we start running zone runs right he's really going to mm -hmm. excel in that or if we go back to what we did last year right hey we want to run the football but instead we're going to throw the we're going to throw the ball 50 times a game I think he can be one of these pass blockers that you developing maybe two or three years down the line I think he could be one of these really good pass blocking guys to where he can do it 50 times a game and you can really see I think even day one, Brian, his hands aren't great, but I I don't think there's just some defensive end that could just run the loop on him, right? And, and, no, and he's gonna he is so long yeah. and big that yeah, if, if the way he can kick and he can kick wide and the width that he can get with his athletic ability and the length that he can keep you wide will always give him a chance. But I think you're completely nailing the player right now for who he is and. Uh, we've mentioned this. He's not a finished product right now. I think that you, there's some things. There's a lot of really good traits about this player sure. that you can that you can build on. And, and but there's going to be some things you have to clean up with him. He mm -hmm. is not a. It ain't like you're drafting, you know, Fawaga or Alt or one of those guys. But you're getting a, a player that's got the ability to 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 develop. And but also be a guy that once he gets that consistency, he could be a, you know a guy that that plays a long time in this league. Man, Brian, but if there's a team that can take a player, and all right, you see what they do on film, right? And they just show up at minicamp doing the opposite of what you saw on film. If there's a team that's done it consistently this past couple of years, it is the Dallas football Cowboys, sir. Uh, Michael Parsons turned into a pass rusher all of a sudden. Tyler mm -hmm. Smith turned into a dangerous hand fighter in his placement. He still hold a little bit, but his hand placement, he'll, he'll go and play tackle for you. There's no way I thought Tyler Smith was going to be a left tackle in his league. Well, boy, he gave you a solid year at left tackle. So I'm looking at Guyton. And it's looking strange in his Oklahoma tape, Brian Brothers. He was a tight sure end. He, he yes. was a tight end H back not too too long ago. But if there's sure a team, if there's a team that could do it, man, I think the Cowboys, the Cowboys have a pretty decent shot to prove me wrong in that way. I have my reservations. I like my players a little put together a little bit more. I was really mm -hmm. hoping for Troy, uh, Troy, Troy um, Fountainu from Wash. I was really hoping for him. I love him to pieces, but yeah. I trust my Cowboys, Brian. Now we're here in. We well, should trust. Please. You should trust them about this offensive line. Sure, that's the one thing that they've kind of been able to prove as a plug and play. 
uh, situation, especially with their first round guys. Yeah. But this whole thing circles back to pick 73. My focus on today's we go. draft is pick 73. That's where I'm going to see whether this trade was really worth it for these. Now, that's being dramatic. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be, I don't want to come on here and be dramatic. No, but no, I am no. that's real. Say, that's real, Brian. That's yeah, real. Yeah. I want to say that pick 73 to me, if it turns out to be a guy like Peyton Wilson or somebody like that, or one of these, one of these running backs that I really like. Okay. Now, you know what, you know, Hey, I will take, I will take, I will take Guyton and pick 73 guy over maybe what I got with Graham Barton or maybe even Arnold, the cornerback. I'll, I'll, if you give me two, two legitimate starter type players, I, 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 I will, I will applaud this trade that you did. I, I do think they did the right thing. Sure. I do because they needed, they needed some capital and to pick up Eighth. Detroit on an overpay, a yeah. big overpay. A big overpay, I think, is a is a it was a good way to operate, Brian. Just for the audience that that doesn't understand the gravity and the importance of this situation, seventy three is so massive. Seventy three is. is massive, it you know. And, and having the fourth round pick that the Cowboys would have had, I mean, that's not a top one hundred player for you. That's uh that would have been player one twenty four. Okay, right. uh, two things Jerry said yesterday that was interesting. One, he said, "Hey, we got pick number seventy three, and that's where this draft is pretty good value wise." He's right. he's not lying, Brian. I think, not lying. I think there's going to be a second round value player that's going right. to be available that's going to be available for you at seventy three, and and we'll see how the you know how the board falls. But I presented this idea to you a couple of weeks ago, and I saw you say it again on a couple of platforms here, and I think this is a great time to revisit it. I can feel whatever I want to feel about the first the first pick at twenty four, but. You have you having 73, it makes you a little more flexible now, right? To where you may have gone into day two going, all right, guys, we we gotta hit on 56 and we gotta hit on 87, but we'll miss right. this. Now you can go, man, I'll take a running back and feel good. I'll take a linebacker and I'll feel good. Right. But I'm curious, Brian. I think we can say 90% running back and linebacker goes here, but this third pick that we got today. You open the show. You don't think that is that is D tackle. You don't get a feel that is D tackle. No, man. I mean, I'm. I just don't. And I and I've thrown out a lot of this this thing with, you know, with uh, with Jackson from Texas A&M. I, I just, man, to me, it could it be a three technique. You know, I, I just don't. I don't know. That's the thing about it is I'm talking to people, and I get these vibes of running back i get the vibe of a potential center or guard sure. you know because they're they're starting to think about could this be zach martin's last campaign what are you going to do with tj bass is he going to be uh the right guard going forward uh but you just get that vibe and i get a vibe about a wide receiver as mm-hmm. well so linebacker running back uh wide receiver uh, and then now maybe the defensive tackle plays into play here but it just seems like to me and i and i for the life of me maybe they feel like listen we're not going to take a defensive tackle because we're going to make mozzie smith play we're going to make mozzie smith get bigger and we're going to make mozzie smith play Mm -hmm. and if mozzie smith doesn't play well enough then we 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 pooped in the bed but i just feel like though just kind of this vibe and i'm getting is that maybe that defensive tackle that I want that, like I said, uh, you know, uh, McKinley Jackson from Texas A&M, mm-hmm. maybe that one technique's not in the picture right now, unless it's much later, uh, you know, maybe a day three kind of a situation. Jerry Jones did alluding to, or or he just alluded to the fact that doubling down on offensive line and taking your center today is a possibility. So, Brian, let me yeah. ask you this. Um, and I do agree with what you're saying. As much as I love Jackson Powers Johnson, yeah. If you're taking a center in the first round, I play center. You did also. We, right. We we have a lot of responsibilities. A ton. We, we got a lot of responsibilities. And how I explained it on my show last night or with uh with uh, me, Will and Foots, is that if your center is sur- is you know, cerebrally what you want him to be, that takes at least 15 seconds of thought away from Dak 
Prescott, right? What was I, so good about Travis when when he was there? Exactly. Some of the, some of the things that Dak is doing at the line of scrimmage, Travis did for him, right? Right. So when you have a have a center that's a thinker that can line everybody up that sets the protection. Hey, that's the mic. Hey, uh, running back wherever you are, Rico Gathers. This is your guy. We're not touching him, right? When you have a center that can do that, it gives your quarterback an extra fifteen or so seconds to diagnose the defense or to find another play or something like that. So having a cerebral linebacker, a uh, uh, center is, is very important. Let me ask you this. The whole Jackson powers thing. Did you get the feel that he was off the board because of those things? Or maybe he's just dropped down the board because of those things. Because I think if you get Jackson powers at, at 73, we having yeah. a party, Brian. <laughs> we having a party. No, I, I totally agree with you. I, I don't, like I said, they weren't going to pick him at 24. Sure. The, the things that you're talking about are absolutely true. What we got to, uh, uh, what we don't have the privy, the information of is the, when they bring a kid in on a 30 visit and they put him on the board and I mean, put him on the board of we're watching tape and we're okay. Tell me about this. Tell me about this. They grill these kids, you know, they grill them on, okay, tell me about this. Okay. I'm going to give you a protection and you walk me through this, or I'm going to give you a play and you tell me how you're going to check this. So there's all these things that these boxes I mentioned, you have to check the medical stuff. You have to check that the, you have to check the personality box as well. When we brought you in, are you, are you a different guy? Are you, do you feel, you feel like that you're, you could be a, a little bit of a, uh, a guy that might not fit into the culture or things that we're trying to do here. Um, are you a guy that, uh, you know, when we put you on the board, are you going to bust during games? Hmm. You have to check all those boxes. And I don't think it's just the medical stuff with, with powers Johnson. I, I, I do feel like, cause I had a team tell me that like, no, he's, he's got two concussions. Uh, that's, you know, there was talk about multiple concussions. Yeah. There was talk. I mean, initially it was, multiple and then it was okay two concussions okay fine we can live with this but then but like i say those other boxes that you have to check are important to teams personality fit and then knowledge of the position and how to play the position no there's no question this guy can play the position but does he can he play the position for you if you throw a bunch at him and then all of a sudden it's like damn our center's busted you know, that was a great thing I mentioned about Travis Frederick. Travis Frederick came in as a rookie and was immediately, immediately, he was able to just take it. And and that Biotish had some problem early in his career. Sure. Biotish was having trouble figuring things out. And there was problems, you know, they were going deep into the game, the play clock and stuff like that because they couldn't figure everything out. So it's not just one thing when you start to talk about Powers Johnson. But maybe there is a point in time in this draft where you say, listen, it's kind of like sweat. To me, there's going to be a time where, you know, I say defensive tackle, they might not take one. But is there a point in time where you're looking at sweat and you're going, okay, we don't have a 366-pound guy, that, but this guy parties his ass off. Yeah. Uh, does he really care? I mean, there's going to come a time where you look at him as his spot in the draft and you go, okay, it's worth it to us now. We're sure. not giving him – millions of dollars right now we're paying him this and we think we can we can handle it on this end this so a lot going into this yeah yeah um this ain't the boy scouts brian yeah no. I mean? and Jim you, garrett said that a long time ago when he was yeah. talking about randy moss yeah and 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 chan gailey was you know sitting there and chan gailey's like oh he, randy moss is this randy moss is that and jim garrett looked at him and says coach this isn't the boy scouts mm -hmm. this is the nfl you know and Jerry Jones will never forget that. I mean, yeah. I, I watched the video of Jim Garrett saying it, and Jim was right. Yeah. He was right. This is the NFL. It ain't the Boy Scouts. Sweat would help you, and Powers Johnson would help you. They got warts, yes, but they, would. they yeah. look you. They got warts, but you need dudes. And just where we're at value wise, those dudes will uh, make a little bit of sense. Let's talk about some uh, some options here today, Brian Bros. We're going to start off with running back. So Jerry Jones. 
I don't like that he did it. I hate we got to be so so visible with what's going on. But he just hopped on the uh, press conference last night. Boy, I love me some Jonathan Brooks, boy. Love him to pieces. Hoo-wee. Boy, he's so smart. And he friends with Overshone when Brian brought it. Boy, they've been... I'm telling you, man, Jerry, I think Jerry's throwing a diversion on you here. Really now? I, you know I, it, but, you know, it, it has to be. This is such a... They move yeah. so secretly now. They move yeah. so secretly now. Why would they openly say, hey, we love this kid? Jerry's Why? also 81 years old. My dad does the same damn thing at 85. Yeah, he just drunk. says stuff, and you're like, Dad, you can't say that. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. But I, I, I will say this about Jerry, and this is where, Vach, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. I've talked to some really credible sources uh, that I believe are credible sources for me. And they're, Bobby Belt and Nick Harris will tell you there is some absolute love there's like jerry love what we just saw from jerry there is some legitimate jerry love and then i've talked to some other people that are like we got a third round grade on this guy yeah we don't it, no it's it's not a you know there's there's some concern there there's you know this guy that guy you know we like this guy a little bit and i don't know if it's a diversion on me I, I, this is the one player I, it wouldn't surprise me if they took him but it wouldn't surprise me also if they didn't take him at 56 if he was there. I mean, now that's that's being truthful. Yeah. I mean, because I've heard split on this. I've heard, like I say, I trust Nick Harris. Mm -hmm. I trust Bobby Belt. Those guys have got some really good sources in that room. Mm -hmm. But to me, I've heard some guys too say, well, you know, don't connect the dots, Broadus. You guys always want to connect the dots here. You know, you always want to, you know, and I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? Your doctor did the damn surgery on him. You drafted Jalen Smith when the doctor did the damn surgery on him in the second round. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. There's the, yeah, I'm going to connect the dots here. You're at his pro day. You're working with him. Da, 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 da. You know, 30 visit, all this stuff. Yeah. So, man, that is one that I would be very, I would be very interested to see really which way it goes because I trust what Nick and, and Bobby are saying. And I'm also thinking that my guys are also saying, hey, don't connect the dots. But I guess we'll see about that one. Contrary to what some of the media guys are saying, Brian, I, I think this is actually a pretty good running back class for us. And there's a lot of dudes that I would really Here like on this team yeah. a whole bunch. So, yeah, you know, Jonathan Brooks, if you want them, I'm assuming you would have to take him in the second. But I would feel much better if you get like a Trey Benson, Florida, Jalen Wright from Tennessee, like the, like yeah. value-wise, right? Taking those dudes in the, in the third round make a lot more – with your later third-round pick because you got two of them now. Taking right. those guys with your later third-round pick makes a little more sense to me you like Marshawn Lloyd taking him later value wise makes more sense to me than taking the injured Jonathan Brooks with your second round you can do whatever you want to do with your second round pick but you got options in the in the in the third round so we do have uh you know we we do have options there's a lot of players that we brought in on 30 viz I think a lot of those dudes are going to be like some you know undrafted guys that they throw a lot of money at Rasheen Ali's the Jace Jace Mc, right. Jace McClellan's that's hard for me to say uh yeah. th there are some guys that uh you know we could probably look at post draft. Bailey they like they Bailey. like Davis from Kentucky quite a bit too, Vosh. So you they, know if you're getting down there in that, you know, and you're getting down maybe, and I, I don't know, he's probably going to go before 171. Yeah. I don't know if you would take him at 87. Uh, you might have to take him at 87 if that's if that's the case. That's shocking because I love old man Davis, but I didn't think that that they would. But um, yeah. there's some there's some 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 pretty good names on here value wise. If if I had to make a pick though, Brian, I would mm -hmm. love to go Benson from um, from uh, Florida, State. Florida State. Yeah, Benson just <laughs> contact balance. He showed us the breakout speed four nine forty. Uh, he did get hurt, but but that was like two years ago. Jonathan Brooks is like recently hurt guy, so we've seen Benson fully recovered. Uh, he He's a senior, a bit of an older player, but you know, I'm I'm just I'm just looking at, at some of these guys. If we're gonna give a player one contract, uh, four years on it, I'm I'm cool with Benson or Wright. But if it's Brooks, I guess I can live with uh, Brooks also. Yeah, I think that to me, and I was just kind of going through. There's some there's some medical flags that I got, and there's some character flags that I got, and I don't see any of these running backs that are part of their of of character problems or medical problems mm. so, with the exception of Brooks, Brooks of course with the with the with the knee but nothing that would lead me to believe that you couldn't you couldn't take one of these guys the Cowboys were interested in Darius Robinson and that picks that pick makes 
sense that they would be interested in sure. Edge. I think Edge was a was a low key need here. You lose uh, Armstrong, you lose Fowler, and you know. Are you ready to put all your faith in the Sam Williams? Do you want to get a defender for Zimmer? He's he's coming in. Hey, I need some more guys. Plus, maybe we're trying to unlock Michael Parsons, right, and be able to move him wherever you want to move him and, you know, have a full-time edge guy. Demarcus Lawrence is getting older. So in day two, uh, um, Brian Bros, do you think maybe a guy like Chris Braswell, Isaac from Penn State, do you think this is a, like a, a, a conversation we should be having about Braylon Trice today? Any yeah, I do. I absolutely – yeah, I think that – I think that when we always like to throw the phrase out sneaky need mm -hmm. and I think the sneaky need for this team is is the reason why they even entertained Robinson was because of the fact that you know they're looking for defensive ends. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think that I, the the great thing about again having picked 73, it opens you up yeah. to take these positions if man if the best edge is on that board, if take the them. best corners on that board if the best running backs on that board for you, the best centers on that board, it just opens things up for you so much more. And I, I wouldn't, you know, I like I say, I don't think I don't think there's any position today that they could take where I would go. And I mean, and I know Bobby. I was just on with Bobby before I came on with you, Bobby and, and Sean and, and RJ in the morning show, and I was like, I was talking about they they were they were Bobby was mentioned cornerback. I mean, you know, or excuse me, safety. safety. He was talking about safety. And, you know, there's several of these safeties that could very well, you know, they're, they're going to be some quality players at safety that are going to help some people. So I just love the fact that they got pick 73 because, like I say, it opens up so much for them today to be able to say, all right, this is the guy. And then I, I, I my hope is when you're doing your show and I'm doing my show, that when that pick's made, that we look back on it and say, damn it, it was worth it. It was worth it to to get to this point. But it, I think I think the board is completely open to them. I really do. Brian, let me ask you, Tyler Newbin or Chris Braswell? I would take Newbin. Tyler Newbin or Trey Benson? Take Newbin. Tyler Newbin or Zach Frazier? I'd take Frazier. Okay, so those names are kind of some, you know, that's kind of what yeah. we're what we're going to be dealing with here, right? You just played a game with me that is exactly what they would go through in that war room. Yeah, that that is the way the stack is and all that. Um, I love, I love Frazier, mm -hmm. and, and there's players that we love, and we love these players, and and you're like you're kind of at the mercy of maybe they don't love them. Sure, I would love to, for them to draft Frazier from West Virginia. Sure. I really uh, Tyler Newbin's a damn good player too. You know, at safety, I think he's one of the best safeties in the in the draft. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think he could help. You know, with a defense that could use uh, some help. Yeah. And Braswell, let me tell you this: there are times watching Braswell play at Alabama, and he looked better that than Dallas right. Turner playing yes, rushing the past. I think you and I have talked about that a bunch. Yes, sir. You know, yes, so uh, yeah, I those are. All quality names that you and, and if and if and if it went the other way, sure. if they picked the opposite of what I said, You'd be fine. I would be like, "That's a good pick," because those are all it, it to me. It wasn't massive drop offs between where where they were at on my on my stack. Do you think the Cowboys like Zach Frazier? Because I think where they're at, we know where they're at with center. Yeah. They just drafted offensive line, and you know maybe Zach won't be there for him. But but you just right. made a face. Do you think they like Zach Frazier at all? No, I'm I'm no no I'm disgusted because I don't know that, and I feel okay. terrible for your listeners or our listeners that I don't have that information. It's okay. Um, to me, I. I want to believe, you know, he wasn't a 30 visit guy, but that, you know, they've drafted non 30 visit guys before. Yeah. I just don't know if they think enough. The guys with the wrestling background, I mean, you watch him against Texas, there's all this yeah. positivity about him. Brian Baldinger did a really great breakdown in Baldy's breakdowns, you know, clips of him playing and stuff, and you could see it. You could see the leverage and the athletic ability. I don't know if they see Frazier the same way that I do. Sure. And that to me, it's going to be, I, I, you know, Zach Wolchuk's going to be, okay, Brian, who's your best player on the board? Uh, it's Frazier, West Virginia. And yeah. then I'm going to, you know, and then he's going to get passed by the Cowboys and it's, you know, but in my heart of hearts, I know the kid's a hell of a football player. I do feel like they're going to maybe dress the offensive line again, sure. but it could be a guard. 
it yeah. could be a guard that they're looking at right now. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, just for anybody that's interested, you know, center names that we could have uh, here is uh, Cedric Van. The nerve of Cedric Van Pran to add another last name. So it's Cedric Van Pran Granger, Granger now. So the nerve yeah. of him. Uh, Jackson Powers <laughs> Johnson, maybe he's like a if, – if you're at your last third-round pick possibly and he's still on the yeah. board, maybe the Cowboys consider it. And uh, Zach Frazier, I think those are some names that could go today. Names that could, you know, that could, you know, last till the next day. Uh, maybe Norzad, Penn State. Uh, maybe like Bordellini, Wisconsin. But, you know, Lemmer from Arkansas, those are some names. Limmer, yeah, those guys. Yeah, I think I think you got the right. I think you got the right path here. I would. I wouldn't be surprised though, uh, if early in this second round though that we see, and uh, that Frazier goes and, and guys like that. I think there's going to be a run on some of these linebackers. I think there's going to be a, a run on some of these corners too. I think you know Phillips from Kentucky and some guys like that. I think they're going to be a, a little bit of some runs coming up. So you said something interesting that stood out to him. You said the Cowboys may be looking more guards. So I'm thinking about guards yeah. that have flexibility to play some sure. center that can move around a little bit. Yeah. Cooper State. Cooper BB is a guy that can yeah. play guard and center for you. Christian Haynes from UConn is a guy that can play there guard and go. center. Zach Zenter from Michigan. Dominic Puny from Kansas is a tackle. That's a name you need to keep an eye on. Keep an eye on Puny. 30-visit yeah. guy. 30-visit yep. guy. Play, play tackle. Goes to the senior bowl. Snaps the football. Plays a little bit of guard for you. Uh, I think that's interesting. And if you get wiped out there, then maybe like Brendan Coleman, TCU is a guy that you could play sure. guard, and, guard and center with him. So uh, yep. that can be interesting for the day. Uh, Christian Mahogany, what's your thoughts like maybe possibly but he's not a center yeah, guy the thing, the thing i'm hearing is i'm hearing there's some medical flags on christian mahogany now that i didn't know about the tape is really really good though yeah just uh, maybe that some teams might have him off the board with some medical stuff i need to circle back on that uh the guards that i heard possible medical were mahogany coleman zeitner and keegan were the were the four that i heard i i, I honestly i i don't Keegan's the Michigan kid. I, sure. For some reason, I'm going blank on uh, if I study or I'm trying to think about it. Sometimes well, it's six of them, Brian, so it's hard to. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, Mahogany, Coleman, Zeitner, Keegan were the, the ones that were some 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 medical flags on those guys yeah. that might uh, might drop them down or maybe make them a, a little bit of a risk to take. I think this would piss Cowboy Nation off. But we're connecting dots, Brian. <laughs> um, Jatavian Sanders was a was a thirty visit. I yes. thought that was interesting. They had two. They had two two tight end thirty visits. I forgot the other character, but they looked at tight end. I wouldn't do it. I don't think they are. I think everybody would be a little questioned about that, but he was. Why was he a 30 visit? Why is tight end two tight ends? Why did you use two of your 30 visit slots on a tight end, Brian Broaddus? I wonder. Let me see. This is this kid with this kid maybe a Dallas Day guy. Is that why he showed up? I wonder if they, you know, in, there was a combination of Dallas Day guys okay. and then there were 30 visit guys. Okay. But uh yeah, let me man, I, I hate when I don't have it just like right at my hands, right? Uh, no, nah, nah, it's, it's 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 that's perfectly fine, Brian. That mean I ask good questions that you weren't ready for. No, that's no, no, that no. I I I wanna cause like I said, the 30 visit <laughs> stuff I think is you know, because I think it's important. Sure. I, I really, really do. Uh, you know, when you start to talk about, all right, here we go. I actually got it. Yeah. They visited They visited uh, Sanders and Wiley. Wiley. From TCU. Jerry Wiley. Wiley yeah. was the other one. And I wonder, though, if those guys were th or Dallas Day guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. Okay. I wonder with Sanders and Texas, and TCU. Wiley. Yeah, Texas, yeah T TCU for sure. And the and the common theme between those guys, Brian, is that they're more pass catching guys. They don't. They they're not really like your blocking yes, tight end. And something yes. interesting at the press conference that everybody hated from three or four days ago. Out of all the young people that the Joneses could have mentioned, John Stevens was a name that they brought up like directly. Like, hey, yeah. Overshawn and John Stevens. They ain't say Junior for Hoko, Brian. They ain't say right. nothing about Deuce Vaughn. They mentioned John St John Stevens, and he's a pass catching tight end. So I wonder, are they getting ready for like the Hendershot departure or something like that to bring somebody in to yeah. compete with them? I think so. I think I think you're I think you're absolutely on to something there. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that at some other point. But now let's get to the uh to the good part, Brian Broaddus. Uh all your linebackers are here. All your yeah. linebackers are here for you. Uh, Junior Colson is a guy you like. Peyton Wilson is a guy we love. Um, Edrin Cooper, I think. 
there could have been like some first round conversation or whatever, but I think you feel much better about him if he's at 56 or he's not going to make it to your third round picks, but 56, you feel much better about him. Um, I think it's very likely assuming that you, that they don't go with Jonathan Brooks, that they love to pieces. I think the second round pick could be linebacker. I think they love Colson and the size Peyton Wilson yep. is fantastic. I think he's linebacker one, the first round pick if he's not injured guy and, uh, Edrin Cooper, great athlete, great coverage, great length. Um, but maybe Edger and Cooper is a um, redundancy with what you have with Overshawn already. They, they're kind of built similarly, those longer guys. I don't know. But, Brian, how do you think linebacker is going to pan out? Because I'm positive linebacker is going to be in, is going to be, a, be a conversation. Yeah, I think so. We all – my favorite one is Peyton Wilson from, from North Carolina State. 30 and we all know there's – you know, he's a guy that if you talk to people around the league, everybody's talking about him as, a, as probably a lower second-round type of a player. Yeah, you know, because of the injury history, him and then Ford from Texas were two guys that I heard on tags that might have some medical concerns. Well, we know Wilson's got mm -hmm. medical concerns. I was surprised about Ford from Texas mm -hmm. uh, being a guy that has some medical concerns. I mean, these are things you all pick up at the the day before the draft, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, damn it, every one of these guys has got something wrong with them, you know, yeah. and you know now your board's all whacked. But I, I would love for them to be able to draft Peyton Wilson. I, I think with Cooper, you mentioned it, Colston from Michigan. You know, there are just so many quality uh, uh, linebackers in this draft. And But I wonder, I wonder with them all being on the board still, you know, are we going to see a run? And is Dallas going to be at the end of the run at sure. 56? Um, man, I, that, I just think there's a couple positions. Corner. Mm -hmm. linebacker, and maybe these wide receivers. That's Definitely. where I think there's going to be some serious runs. And maybe, you know, Dallas got just l very fortunate uh, with the players that got to him in the first round. You know, maybe at 56 they'll get that kind of luck. I hope they didn't use it all up in the first round yesterday. But there's some quality, as you mentioned, some quality linebackers. I love the Wallace kid from Kentucky. Trevor that's Wallace. another one of my guys that I really, really love. So, um We'll see. They, 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 they're probably, they, I love these guys. They probably hate these guys. That, yeah. That's just the beauty of what we're doing right now. So what Cowboys need today is I was I was shocked that as many quarterbacks went yesterday, but hey, if this is if this is a time for Hartman and Pratt to get involved, sure. Let's let's yeah. get those guys drafted so we can bump those guys down. But also too, Brian, you were you were talking about runs. Tyler Guyton is in the house now. So if right. y'all want to draft all the offensive tackles now, Blake Fisher, Kieran, Amagadigie, uh, you know, Caden Wallace, Patrick Paul, Matt Gunn Calvin's maybe a day three guy or so. But sure. if, you know, if you want some of those tackles, you want some of those tackles to come off the board to push some guys down to you yeah and i'm really liking what you're you know what you're saying like where's the run gonna happen um you know linebacker could be a run wide receiver could be a run maybe when we get to the third round there's gonna be a run on running back so uh maybe i i think there's gonna be quality players for you when you get to 56 56 and 73 and 80 uh, uh 73 no and i think this is gonna be i think this is going to be a really fascinating night for the draft just because of all the players, the nice players that are still on the board. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about what where the Cowboys sit. Yeah. I really am excited. That 73rd has got me energized right now. Sure. That, that like, man, those picks, when you, when you, you got 56, then man, now you're back on the clock at 73. Now yeah. you're back on the clock at 87. Yeah. I'm, I'm energized by this. Yeah. Tomorrow is probably going to suck dealing the fourth round, just sitting there all day. Yeah. But I know that I had pick 73 and I know that I have that player. And that's to me, is going to be exciting. Hey, I, I want to say something real quick, Bosh. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about you when, uh, when, uh, when Pearsall went off the board, Ricky Pearsall went off the board. Oh, for we knew it, Brian. Brian, <laughs> didn't we know it? Uh, Pearsall is so good. Oh, he's so good. But hey. You know. Oh, by the way, too, that McConkie's got some medical stuff that we need to figure out, too. Mm. He was on my list of guys that got flagged. So, you know, Lad McConkie, we all like him as a player. But yeah, Pearsall. When he went, I was uh, the first person I thought about was you. I said, I said, Bosh, that's his guy right there. That is that is his player. We that's did it, Brian. Lover. We did it, man. We got him there. Uh Brian, let me ask you this. What, let me just say, uh, Lab McConkey, Malachi Corley, Troy Franklin, A. D. Mitchell, your guy Roman Wilson from Michigan, Malik Washington, Javon Baker, Keon Coleman, Jermaine Burton, Jalen Polk, uh, Tez Walker from North Carolina, Jacob Cowie, maybe yeah. a, maybe a name. Brendan Rice. 
Jalen McMillan, like Luke McCaffrey, Brian, there's some dudes. There's some dudes at wide receiver. Yeah. And I think, you know, you said that you feel really – like you feel like the Cowboys are conver- – they're having conversations about I wide think, receiver. I think they're – yeah. Yeah, I think there's – don't be surprised at 87. I You know, maybe if you grab – you know, grab what you think you grab at 56 and mm-hmm. 73 – if one of those man, you you just ran through a list of some quality wide receivers. Yeah, you know, and if you hey, if you want to try and find a way to be a be a better Tolbert or a better Cooks, and I think there's some avenues there. Sure, right? but don't 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 discount a wide receiver uh, for this football team and potentially at 87. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't think wide receiver is a terrible emergency, but I do think there are some dudes in this class right now that come in and they help you immediately. Something that we're having a conversation about, and I, I keep plugging my show, but please watch me, Fuster King and Will Steele, everybody watching right now. But Brian, you know, we like Jalen Tolbert, but the Cowboys, I think, have an opportunity to draft like a true X receiver. And I don't think... I don't think Jalen Tobert is like a true X guy. He's a dude that can move around your formation, play a little bit of slot, right. play a little bit of flanker, and you can involve him in the offense. But as a true X receiver, I think if the Cowboys draft that dude, that dude starts. Because as a true X guy, yeah. that's like, okay, you're not trying to beat Tobert right now. You're being what Gallup was. You know, you're being like that dude that exists out there. And maybe that was the thing in, uh, in you know, the Cowboys offense that was a little bit weird last year, that we really didn't have a true X guy. Gallup was a guy that we we wanted to be the X guy, but Gallup wasn't healthy. Gallup really didn't give us what he once was, you know? So we had to deal with Cooks, and we had to deal with, you know, Jalen Tolbert playing out of position, air quote. I think you have an opportunity with a with a, with a a couple of these guys on the board here, Brian, to get a true X receiver, and I think that dude starts immediately. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right about that. To me, it's very, uh, uh, you know, it, there's it's such quality. It, it's such and, – and I think it's a huge upgrade. I, yeah. I really, really do. I mean, if, you know, depending on what you think about with Cooks, you know, you, you lose Gallup, you need Tolbert to play better. But, man, I think there's some guys that you, we just ran through that might be better players than Tolbert. And you're right about the X receiver. You know, yeah. give me a dog out there playing that X. Yeah. You know, that's what you absolutely need. A.D. Mitchell, Javon Walker, Keon Coleman are, are, are guys I think that come in day one your ex receiver and those guys would be better than, than Jalen Tober. So it's definitely going to be a, going to be a wild ride. It's definitely going to be a day that's worth talking about. Like I said, regardless of whatever we feel about the first pick that we had, the, uh, the uh, 24th overall pick, Jalen Guyton, man, getting this uh, 73 overall overall pick, getting the pick high in the third and late in the third, I think that's going to pay off dividends with your roster building, and maybe that can mitigate some of that lack of um, free agency that we're doing over here. Brian Bros, you got a long day. You're a you're a very busy man. Both of us are. I've been doing content all night. I haven't gotten very much sleep. There you this, go. But this is the time of year that we've really been uh, that we've really been working sure. and, and you know prepping for. So I will sleep next week. Brian Broaddus, thank you so much for being here. We, we appreciate you. You are a sensei, and you help me and my audience get to this point. Uh, you know, draft wise, right? Day one, we're in day two now. Day day three tomorrow. You were a part of this process, and we all thank you very much, sir. So I, I, I appreciate you. Well, hey, thank you guys for working so hard at this and and again the the platforms that we all have uh you know it, it's a lot of fun to be a part of this you, uh, your audience is outstanding you do a hell of a job you will there's just a lot of great people that that, that do this on a daily basis and, and do it for the love of it as well and so it's always a pleasure to be with you and man and Happy happy draft day to everybody. Let's finish this thing off pretty well. What do you say? Yes, sir. 100%. Uh, let's enjoy these picks. I'll be texting you just, you know, just to stay in touch with you and all that. Brian, Brian, B-R-Y-N brought us on social medias, and we are only going to be promo and draft show because that's the only thing that matters right now. The the draft show day two coverage is going to be fantastic. If you watch them live, catch me, Will Steele, and Fusta King later on. If you watch us live, go check out their work afterwards. We yeah. need all that engagement. Hey, it's, it's great content either way. Either way. Hey, we appreciate y'all for being here. Y'all hold it down and we'll catch y'all next time. Peace.